for patent right is a crime wrong use of the words patent office is a crime refusal to supply information to the central government regarding your information is a crime and practicing as an unregistered patent agent is also a crime so if you're not a patent agent please don't file a patent application it's a criminal offense and of course uh, offenses by companies so these are the crimes under the patents act so we'll move on revocation proceedings again they will lie before the ipab or the intellectual property appellate board the head office which is at chennai in guna complex so whatever grounds on which you challenge section 64 has some grounds on which you can challenge a patent that uh, there are several grounds the the main grounds are challenging it on novelty inventive step and industrial applicability um, there's public interest you can challenge it in public interest and you can also challenge it on non working non working is basically creating that false scarcity where he is just you know not using it not letting you use it just squatting on the right that is not what the act intends so we'll move on appellate uh, proceedings again there are a whole lot of reasons why you can go by way of appeal all these appeals will lie before the ipab so uh, so you can uh, file these appeals and uh, we'll go on opposition proceedings you can oppose in two stages like a copyright you cannot op oppose at all there is no provision for opposition in trademark you can oppose after advertisement in the trademark journal but in the patent case you can oppose at two stages before the grant you can file a pre grant opposition after the grant within one year you can file a post grant opposition so that is the opposition proceedings and then we'll move on to the last and final act that i will speak to you about so uh, is the geographical indications act um, we'll move on what is a geographical indication can you tell me what is a geographical indication can you just name one india is just flooded with geographical indications tirupati laddu no i don't think so. ah kanchipuram silk is see uh, you know as such it it is only dispensed by a single entity the whole idea of geographical indication is like kanchipuram silk madurai malli yes sirumalai bananas basmati rice <laughs> no um, yes i know that they filed within that temple in that particular kitchen they filed the latitude and longitude and said okay you give us registration but i'll just tell you one thing oh, i i mean this is also my view see okay let us say uh, china decides we will make kanchipuram sarees okay so they take about a thousand kanchipuram weavers and they take them to beijing okay in beijing the thousand kanchipuram uh, weavers are there so that there is no conflict the silkworms are also taken from kanchipuram so the weavers are there the material is also there and china starts making kanchipuram saree exactly same design same material even the best mummies in madras cannot find the difference can we give them kanchipuram as a gi so that's the essence of a gi gi is historically where it, did it come from it is not about specifications it is about geographical indication that means only the people in kanchipuram who make kanchipuram sarees can call it a kanchipuram silk okay now let us say okay in kanchipuram instead of making kanchipuram silk some 10 people are making mysore silk can we call that kanchipuram so it is a combination specifications also should be there the geographical area also should be there so only when the both mix can you call it a geographical indication so people in if not in today's science and technology we can match the specs anywhere in the world but the essence of a gi is to give that geographical indicate that geographical area an advantage you will yes you will get a 15% they say the study says you will have a 15% increase in price if it comes from that particular area the world demands things like that okay so the gi will only be given to that geographical area 
if it matches that particular specification we'll move on so who can file any association of persons producers organization authority established by or under law in most regions around the world it is only authorities established under law uh, for instance apida in india is a statutory authority and they are the owners of the basmati trademark because basmati trademark for instance is the sub himalayan indo gangetic plain which covers several states and even portions of oh, never mind so the sub himalayan indo gangetic plain okay so that vast area how do we make an association of persons generally speaking it is government or bodies who will know who those farmers are in that area make them an association and apply for the gi you need a statement you need to mention which class of goods you need to put the geographical map in your trademark application and mention the latitude and longitude like for instance for the kanchipuram laddu it is uh, it is uh, the and uh, not the kanchipuram laddu the tirupati laddu so the tirupati laddu they, they got the latitude and longitude of that particular kitchen but it's not an association of persons it's a single person it's yeah the requirement is that it should be uh, uh, an association of persons particulars of gi should be sought in words and figures so you will uh, and you can also provide uh, particulars of the person seeking registration like you can describe your association this is an association of farmers in sirumalai who grow the malaiwala palam you need to say that you know in so many words so that's how you secure a gi registration this is where the gi office is again at chennai so um, then we'll move on you cannot assign a gi unlike other intellectual properties because tomorrow you can sell it to somebody in beijing and he can sell kanchipuram no he you cannot assign a gi gi is yours and you can keep it that's it okay civil litigation only infringement is possible you do not have a common law remedy and your uh, registration is prima facie proof of validity the reason why i say this is because something i didn't tell you during the patent act see you make uh, uh, the patent registration can be challenged in an infringement action but you cannot do that with a gi it will just presume to be valid we'll move on defendants remedy remedies in a civil court <laughs> you better settle and if you don't settle then you need to prove how you don't come within the ambit of that particular registration okay now move on criminal action yes it uh, contemplates in section 8 uh, section i'm sorry chapter 8 sections 37 to 54 there's a wide range of uh, criminal uh, actions that are prescribed under the gi act um, that you can file a uh, falsely applying a geographical in indication false geographic indications selling goods with a falsely described geographical indication and the list goes on so there are several offenses that are prescribed madam criminal action yes under ipc or that the particular act yes each act prescribes the criminal remedy in this it is not the ipc it is chapter 8 of the gi act Geographical Indications Act of 2000. That is under the Patent Act, and they probably brought it under Section 420 as fraud. Yes, if it is combined with fraud, but uh, infringement of patent simpliciter, you have to go under the Patent Act. but i don't yes sir no i am understand in the sense that uh, a fraud can be played in respect of anything so it really depends uh, how they interpreted the fraud in that particular case and i really don't know if he was prosecuted under the ipc but the only possible offense that i can see under the ipc is to bring it under fraud or cheating as such offenses are prescribed in the respective acts 
Trademarks Act, the offence is prescribed under section 102 and 103. Copyright Act under section 63 of the Copyright Act. Like that in GI Act, there are a range of offences under chapter 8. Similarly under the Patent Act also. There are offences prescribed in that particular Act. Again rectification proceedings, you can either go before the Intellectual Property Appellate Board, again you have to be an aggrieved person and then there is no remedy beyond that, so you file a writ or go on SLP. Okay, well go on. You can also file appeal uh, if the order in the, uh, in the GI registry goes against you, you go by way of an appeal proceedings under Chapter 7 and only the Appellate Board at Chennai can hear a GI proceeding. That's how it stands right now, the circuit bench does not operate. So I'll move on. Opposition proceedings, again there is a provision for opposition just like a trademark. It is advertised and under sections 41 to 51, the procedure for opposition is prescribed under the GI Act. So you go on. I am so sorry, I told you it was the last act, I still have one act left. It's the Designs Act, we will go very fast through this one. So move on. So what is a design? A design is something that can be judged solely by the eye. So something pretty is a design. You know, generally uh, uh, shape of bottles, shape of this chair, some, some very novel shape that nobody else has. The same rule that applies to patent applies with design. It has to be novel and not anticipated. Nobody should have done it before you. We'll go on. How to secure a registration? You have to be a real or legal person. You will pay the prescribed fee. You can file it in any one of the 31 classes. If your, your uh, product does not come in the 31 classes, there is an omnibus clause which is called class 99. You can file under class 99. It should be novel, which I said that earlier. And the registration that you secure will date back to the date of application. We'll move on. There is only one design office in India, in India and it's in Kolkata. We'll move on. You can assign, transmit, license and even mortgage your design under the Designs Act under Section 30. You can file only an infringement suit under the Designs Act. It is a statutory remedy and uh, you can ask for injunctive relief. Your minimum remedy is 25,000 and the maximum has been capped at 50,000 for damages. So. Um, no common law remedy, but there are several people who secure common law remedies with design. Do you know how they do it? It's a backdoor way. I already mentioned it earlier. Do you know how you can get a common law remedy in design? Okay, I'll make it quick, okay? I said a shape is a trademark. Under the 99 Act, a shape is a trademark. And a trademark, there is a passing off action. So you can plead your design as a shape under the Trademarks Act and get a common law remedy. So that's the backdoor way of getting a common law remedy in the Designs Act. So then we'll go on. Defendants remedies against settlement or prior use or loss of novelty, which means he already sold it for three weeks and then filed a design application or some X or Y in Australia did it, and that's it, it's gone. And you can take any of the grounds for cancellation of the design under Section 19 of the Designs Act as a ground, as a defense in your suit. Move on. Cancellation proceedings are under section 19 and can be done only at Kolkata and before the controller of designs. Appellate proceedings and appeal will lie to the High Court against an order passed by the controller of designs and uh, under section 36. Okay, happiness is being a lawyer. I really enjoy being a lawyer. And unless you really enjoy being a lawyer, you really can't practice this field. So again with IPR I found, never make a false statement in court. Don't argue your weak cases, always settle them. Don't lose faith in the judiciary and be very passionate about what you do. And I think that's the formula for success. And if you forgot everything that I just said, that's my contact details and you can call me anytime and I'll be happy to help you with it. Thank you. So any questions now? Plagiarism with respect to literary works, a copyright. Yes.
Hmm. No, uh, uh, there is no act as intellectual property act, actually there never was, but uh, five acts are called intellectual property laws. They are Trademarks Act, Patents Act, Copyright Act, Designs Act and Geographical Indications Act. All these five together are called intellectual property law in India. Apart from this, there is also the trade secrets, there is a different whole genre of what is called trade secret. For instance, Coca-Cola, they never filed a patent because after 20 years they have to disclose their formula to everybody. So they protect it as a trade secret. This is possible in the USA where they have something called the Economic Espionage Act. In India, we don't have any legislation for trade secrets. There is also the industrial drawings. There are so many other intellectual properties that we have not brought in through legislation in India. We protect our trade, uh, our trade secrets under the Contracts Act, where we say, okay, you know, I have signed a non-disclosure agreement with you and you are in breach of it. But as such, the Trade Secret Act, I mean, they say uh, in USA, all five people who know the formula of Coke won't take the same flight because what if the flight crashes? So they go to extreme ends to protect. But there is no protection for that property in India. So there, it's, a, it's a hugely growing field. I mean, the copyright uh, board being abolished and the, uh, the appeals and cancellation proceedings coming to Chennai happened two weeks ago. Three weeks ago, the Trademarks Act was, uh, rules were amended. Suddenly, we can register well-known trademarks. So it's just growing every day. Then, of course, there are the cyber crimes. There's the IT Act. That there's a whole domain of the internet and uh, copyright protection for intermediaries. Who are intermediaries? People like YouTube, people like Google, who are neither the owner of the copyright nor the end user, but somebody in between. And they are breaking it or violating it as some knowledge or facilitating spreading of copyright through some other people. So there's so many issues and this particular field of law is really growing in mammoth proportions. So yes, it's a growing field and what we call intellectual property right law today may not be the case even two years from now. Yes, it's a growing field, you know, and they have specific uh, provisions in respect of the specific challenges that each of these enactments have. Oh, there are foreign attorneys practicing in India. That doesn't come under the ambit of the uh, IPR legislations and I don't think I am the right person to answer that question. But yes, I mean, this is a field of law in which we have, uh, it goes around the world insofar as, like we have Madrid protocol applications, we have the, you know, patent uh, PCT applications. So you do interact with a lot of foreign attorneys and yes, foreign attorneys want to come to Indian jurisdictions and practice. That is always there, but so far it hasn't happened and I don't know what the future holds on that. Yes? Uh, the pro computer program. Yes, a computer program is a copyright, but uh, the IT... Huh? No, no, no. Pro computer programs come under the Copyright Act. It's specifically defined under the Copyright Act. A computer program is a copyright. Actually, a computer program should be a patent. And, yeah, it should be a patent. It is not a patent as on date. No, it, it, there is no overlap between the IT Act. There is that overlap with respect to provisions on intermediaries, which is, are you asking about intermediaries? No, not copying of the computer program is under the provisions of the Copyright Act. You have to file a suit before any district court if your copyright is, uh, if your computer program is violated. Yeah, piracy of a computer program is under the Copyright Act. I mean, I know Microsoft files huge number of cases at the Delhi High Court. Yes, a copyright, uh, a computer. Yes, it is, it, no, no, see, information technology is much more than computer program. 
information technology is something else I, the range of what you find is is everything that happens on the internet is covered under the Inter information technology act a computer program is just a set of c commands or instructions to a computer expressed in a certain way which we call a computer program that is protected only under the copyright act the it act the ambit is what happens on the internet yeah the ambit of the it act is very different from a computer program under the copyright act yes sir, repeatedly you asked yes sorry No, 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 no. Letters patent, uh, uh, see, patent means an open letter. So the letters patent is just a word which means it's an open letter. So a patent is just, see, the, the idea of patent is I found something groundbreaking, but I'm willing to place it as an open letter. And I'm going to say, okay, this is the open letter. And within 18 months of you filing the patent, what will happen? They'll publish it in a gazette. Your, your invention will be known to the whole world. Everybody in the whole planet can see it. The 8 billion people on planet earth can see your invention. Why? Because based on this invention, they will start trying to improve this invention and make it even better. That is the idea of the patent law. To make this invention of yours an open letter, you are given 20 years monopoly. But although everybody can read exactly how you will you know carry out your invention make this product or carry out that process what they say is we will let you use it and nobody else but you have to use it in a very fair way where you will use it in public interest you won't create false scarcity and create a hyped up price some margin is okay so the word patent is just the english language word for an open letter but the patent under the letters patent and the patent act are completely different. Uh, what? Yes. So that way, yes, the meaning is the same. The meaning is the same, but patent as defined under the patents act is very different from what the patent law, uh, letters patent is about. Sir is asking whether letters patent and the patents act are speaking about the same thing. Is that right? Or do they mean the same thing? Correct, yes. Yes, the word patent means the same thing, which means make known to the public. Yeah, that yeah, that is the same. But the intention of the Patents Act is to protect it thereafter and give somebody an exclusive right for a certain number of years. Yes, yes. Hmm. Composers. See, I don't think they would have had contacts to the contrary at that stage. And they still haven't uh, recognized like a playback singer's rights to a copyright. So yes, if SPB, I mean, he's a very famous singer, he can just put his foot down and say, if I'm singing the song, give me a contract to the contrary. But I don't think it happens. I mean, the producers, maybe they will say, okay, if you are putting your foot down, I'll make somebody else sing. I don't know. Or maybe they'll want him and they'll give him the contract to the contrary. It's all a matter of negotiation. Yeah. What is the difference between patent and design? Uh, patent actually, a patent and design have a certain amount of overlap. In fact, both patent and design were defined and dealt with under the same act of the Patents and Designs Act of 1911. So until 2000, patent and design were under the same legislation. But today we have separate legislations for the Patents Act and for the Designs Act. A Designs Act is a shape which can be judged, uh, a design is a shape which can be judged solely by the eye and has no functional value to it. But a patent is an invention 
which has novelty inventive step and industrial applicability and it is not necessarily judged solely by the eye like a tablet which you swallow to make you healthy may be an invention that laptop is an invention these lights are inventions so you know it is not judged solely by the eye but a design will be judged solely by the eye and will have no functional character to it okay thank you very much you've been a very uh, sweet and participating audience thank you There was a very interesting lecture and it was very detailed and I think it will be very useful not only for the legal fraternity but also for the youngsters and new people who are more interested in all other fields because everybody have to come to you ma'am at one stage with India growing in this structure. So thank you very much ma'am for taking our invitation. I would like to present a small memento. And uh, tomorrow we are having the valedictory lecture by Mr. Arvind P. Datar on constitutional principles at 11 a.m. in the morning. So I request all of you to be here for the lecture. Thank you. Sir, I'll be getting a confirmation, but I doubt it can be done.